And now we're getting into the part of our story where things just get weird. And I'm talking about weird fast because I don't know if number one, a five-star recruit has ever done this before. And I don't know if number two, a five-star recruit will ever even think about doing this in the future. Many, and I mean many, many, many years ago, there was a five-star high school quarterback in the class of 2010 that everybody wanted. And he wasn't just a five-star quarterback, my apologies, I should have thrown this in there as well. He was the number one overall quarterback in the entire nation. In high school, not college, but in high school, he was already listed at six foot two, 217 pounds to be exact. That is a dang near perfect and ideal body frame for playing the quarterback position at any level. He was an absolute stud to say the least, and he wound up deciding to sign with Alabama and Nick Saban. And that's where things start to get really strange, because most people in general, they never even heard this guy, so they don't even remember him. But for the people that do, they still don't even know what really happened and what went down. It's not out of the ordinary for a three-star recruit to go to Alabama and fall behind on the depth chart and you never hear anything about him. We see that all the time. And most times, even if that is the case, the backup quarterback for Alabama or the third stringer, they'll wind up transferring and having success elsewhere. But in this case and scenario, yet again, I'm going to remind you, this was the number one quarterback in all of high school football. He essentially disappeared within the blink of an eye because I remember it just like it was yesterday. Everybody was hyping this guy up, saying he's going to be the next big thing at Alabama. And two years later, everybody's like, wait a minute, what happened to that one dude? He was only on the Alabama roster for one year, guys, one year, and ever since then, his whereabouts have been pretty much unknown. Or at least his whereabouts have been unknown to the public, because come on, man, you know your boy Matt did his research for this video. And there's a lot of questions people have been asking about this guy even to this day, but it all circles back to the one big question we're going to try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened to Philip Sims? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great and fantastic day. If not, hope this video can make it a little better. Just want to stop by and say, if you have any story recommendations, players you want to see videos on, feel free to recommend them down below, and more than likely, if your comment gets a lot of likes, we'll make that video. I really enjoy making these story videos in the off-season, and I've seen a lot of feedback from you guys. It seems like you enjoy them as well. And as always, these videos take a ton of research, a ton of time to make, so if you do enjoy them, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here. Although there is an off-season for college football, there is no off-season on this channel, so if you like football content, I think you enjoy your time here. We cover football all throughout the off-season. March Madness, ooh, I can't wait for that. You know we gotta do our yearly bracket. We've been doing that for like five years on the channel. We got the NFL Draft coming up. There's a lot of stuff to look forward to. I've jibber jabbered enough, though. I'm excited to get into this video. Hope you guys are excited, too. But all right, Matt, blah, blah, shut the crap up. Now, after I don't, let's get into it. Man, oh, man. Good old Philip Sims. That is a name that, if you're a Bama fan, it might just ring a bell. But if you're not a Bama fan, you probably have no idea who this guy is. And I don't blame you for not knowing who he is because, to be honest with you, his story's a mystery. And speaking of story, to get into Philip Sims' story, we got to throw it all the way back to where things started. He played his high school football in Chesapeake, Virginia, where he was one of the best players in the nation. His senior year, he passed for nearly 3,000 passing yards and had 33 touchdowns to only four interceptions. Not too bad. He was a beast, man. He was a beast. And 24-7 Sports gave him a five-star recruit overall ranking and rated him as the number one quarterback in the nation. But here's something I want to point out to y'all that I think is really interesting. As you can see on your screen right here, 24-7 Sports had him rated as the number one pro-style quarterback. And that's the thing with Phillip Sims I do want to throw in there that we'll touch on later in this video. It's a little foreshadowing. Although he looks really athletic, he wasn't a dual threat quarterback. He rarely, if ever, looked to scramble. He was a pocket passer. Fast forward time though, he decides to commit and sign with Alabama and it seemed like a great fit. Gets to Alabama in 2010, which was his true freshman season, and he redshirts to learn the system and, you know, just get his foot in the water. It wasn't like he was gonna play right away anyways because AJ McCarron was already there. So he sits on that season in 2010 to redshirt and in 2011, this is when he first plays for Alabama, but he's still the backup to AJ McCarron. Speaking of AJ McCarron, we may need to make a video on him. I don't know because his story, it's not like it's a big mystery. Most people knows how it turned out, but I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if you want a McCarran video. Anyways, getting back on track here, in garbage time in that 2011 season, let me show you his stats. He did appear in eight games in which he completed 18 passes out of 28, which is not bad whatsoever, right at 64%, but remember it's garbage duty, so take these stats and numbers with a grain of salt. And some people may label this as a red flag, but I didn't whatsoever. He had zero touchdowns that year and two interceptions. And I can't harp on this enough. 
Take this with a grain of salt. It's so hard for me to judge a guy off of being the backup quarterback when you're going into games up by 40. It's not a large enough sample size for me to decide if a guy was going to be really good or really bad. I can't do it and I won't do it. But here's what I will tell you. There was a notion around Alabama that Phillip Sims, he wasn't near the level that they thought he was going to be at and he had a hard time progressing. The reason he was rated as a five-star quarterback and the number one pro-style quarterback in all of high school football is because it looked like potentially he could be a great passer one day. You put him in the right offense, you surround him with great coaches like Alabama had at the time, and he develops and gets better and better and better every single day. Potentially, the sky was the limit. But unfortunately, to make a really long story short here, it just didn't work out at all. So you got to throw in there, AJ McCarron was coming back for another season. So that would have been two straight years of being the backup quarterback and three straight years of not playing. So Phillip Sims wanting to play like everybody else wants to play, he decided, you know what? I gotta leave Alabama and I gotta go elsewhere and that's what he did. But also another reason he wound up deciding to leave Alabama is due to his father's health concerns and because of those health concerns, the NCAA, and this is a rare W by them, they granted him a waiver of immediate eligibility. So this is looking like a fantastic scenario. He gets to leave Alabama, number one, so he's gonna have a chance to play, and number two, he doesn't have to sit down a season. It's unfortunate that his father was having the health concerns in that whole situation, but on the bright side, he didn't have to sit out. And with him going back to his home state in Virginia, it seemed like a match made in heaven. And I remember keeping up with this situation very closely because when he transferred to Virginia in 2012, I was 12 years old. And I remember thinking, oh yeah, Virginia getting a five-star quarterback, he's going to ball out for him. He's going to be the man. Unfortunately, though, that wasn't the case. And I don't want to say he had a bad season, but... I don't think he had a good season. It was average. Only completed roughly 56% of his passes. That's not too great. 1,200 passing yards, nine touchdowns to four INTs. Like I said, not bad, but not good. If I had a greatest season, I'd probably give him a grade of a C minus or a C. You gotta take into account here. We're talking about the former number one pro style quarterback in all of high school football. And now we're getting into the part of our story where things just get weird. And I'm talking about weird fast because I don't know if number one, a five-star recruit has ever done this before, and I don't know if number two, a five-star recruit will ever even think about doing this in the future. After that one year for Virginia, he decides, you know what? It's not working out. I'm going to transfer again. And you're probably thinking, okay, he probably transferred to another Power 5 school or another D1 school, but nope, that's not what happened. Philip Sims decides to transfer to Winston-Salem State. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. Winston-Salem State. I actually have no idea what division they are. They're either probably JUCO, NAIA, or FCS. Let me pull it up. Oh, wait, I was wrong. All my options were wrong. Winston Salem State is D2. And there's nothing wrong with playing for a D2 school, but I think we can all agree on this. It's shocking. You rarely see a guy leave D1 college football, Power 5 college football, to go to D2. And let me throw this in there. It's not like he was terrible at Virginia. He wasn't good by any stretch of the imagination, but he wasn't bad. But whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. Come to find out, there's more to this story than we originally thought. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I probably did at least two to three hours of research trying to find out, okay, why did he actually transfer from Virginia to Winston-Salem State? Because I couldn't fathom it. I couldn't believe he just decided he wanted to play D2 football. Couldn't believe it. I kept telling myself, nope, there's gotta be a reason. There's gotta be some other reason he decided to go there. And the reason I kept doing research is because it didn't make any sense to me. This is a young man who believed potentially he could make it to the NFL. He could make it to a league. That was one of his dreams. And you're not going to get any closer by taking a step backwards. And you can't make this up. Right when I was about to call it quits on my research, I found this out. According to reports, he was academically ineligible at Virginia. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, that's the real reason why he left Virginia. And it makes total sense. But just like with everything, when you find out the answer to one question, you then have new questions to that answer. And my newest question would be, okay, we know he was academically ineligible, but number one, why? Number two, how did it happen? Because come on, man, this is common knowledge. This is common sense. If you're an athlete, if you're on the football team especially, they're going to give you some leeway. They're going to give you a leash. For example, if you're struggling in a class, maybe you're flunking it and you're close to being on academic probation, they're going to let you know and they're going to try to help you out the best they can. And I don't know the answer to the question, but here would be my best educated guess. Number one, either it was so bad that he couldn't come back from it, so he decided, you know what, I'm just going to have to leave. Or number two, Virginia, they tried to help him and he just refused to do any of the work. That would be my best educated guess, but on the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter too much because he decided to leave. And we could talk about why it happened, doesn't matter, it happened. 
he decides to go to Winston-Salem State and wasn't all too bad, and you could argue and say he had a good season there. Did have to sit out the 2013 season, but in 2014, he played in all 11 games, and he was splitting time with the other quarterback. Although he was splitting time, though, he was a leading passer. He passed for over 1,500 yards and had 15 touchdowns to only four INTs. Good numbers, good numbers, but hard to really evaluate him because... With no disrespect, it's D2 football. And that was the final year of his collegiate career, and he decided to enter the NFL draft. Of course, though, not a shock to anybody, he went undrafted. That was a given, though. It wasn't like he was supposed to be drafted and went undrafted. No, nobody had him on their boards. But hold on, hold on, hold on. His football career doesn't end quite just yet. There's more. On May 2nd of 2015, he was invited to an Arizona Cardinals rookie camp on a tryout basis. And guess what? It went really good. On May 10th in 2015, only about eight days later, they signed him. Things were looking good. He worked out with them all summer long, but right before the season on September 4th in 2015, the Cardinals decided to waive him. In other terms here, he didn't even play a single snap for the Cardinals. The whole season goes by, and then randomly, on January 4th in 2016, he gets signed by the Seattle Seahawks. Hey man, that's great. But then only a couple months later, in April of 2016, they wave him. And at this point in time in our story, I gotta give Philip Sims a ton of credit for being self-aware. He loves football, of course, like many other people do, but he knew deep down that his NFL career and his shot of making it to the big leagues, it was all for nothing and it wasn't gonna go anywhere from here. So what did he do? He said, all right, if I'm not good enough for the NFL, I'm gonna try on elsewhere and he joined the CFL. If you don't know what the CFL is, that is no other than the Canadian Football League. And in June of 2016, he signed to the Sasquan, hope I'm saying that correctly, Rough Riders. Saskatchewan. I think that's how you say it, yeah. Let me know in the comment section if my pronunciation is right. He served a very brief, and I mean a very, very, very brief stint with them, and he decided to call it quits in 2017. And you're probably thinking, oh man, that sucks. You never really got a shot, but not really. And this is why I say everything happens for a reason. In 2017, although he was done with playing football, he was named the head coach at John Marshall High School in Virginia. And I truly believe that was Philip Sims' calling on this earth to be a high school football head coach. He did great with that school. And fast forward in time all the way up three years later to 2020, he got a new head coaching job at J.R. Tucker High School. Did great things with them. And then fast forward in time into three more years later in 2023, he accepted a new head coaching position at Princess Anne High School in Virginia Beach. In other terms here, ever since 2017 when he became a head football coach, he's just continued to level up. And even till this day, he's very active on Twitter, and I'll pop up a couple of his tweets right here. Mark Lee's Mays tweeted out about the Alabama football team, and he quote tweeted and said this, Remember this team like it was yesterday. Best locker room I've ever been a part of. And when Nick Saban retired, here's what he posted on Twitter as well. Man, all I can say is thank you. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for seeing something in me. Thank you for believing in me. When others turned their backs, you never did. Since I was 17 years old, you played a huge role in my life. Congrats, and thank you, GOAT. And I looked more into his Twitter, and I'm going to sum it up to you guys. What I see in Philip Sims is currently a guy, a man, that has a lot of gratitude. And I just love the way this story has ended because normally these story videos do not end in a good way. But this one does because Philip Sims, he overcame all the adversity, all the obstacles, and he never put his head down, never felt sorry for himself. He just kept grinding. And that's what life is. It's a grind. And I can't tell you enough how much I respect and admire that from Philip Sims. It would have been real easy for him to put his head between his knees and say, oh, my life sucks and feel bad for himself when his football career didn't work out. But he didn't do any of that. He said, you know what? It sucks that my NFL dreams, they didn't happen, but I got to keep working. And also major shout out to Philip Sims for all the success he's achieved as a head football coach. I'm curious though. Let me know your thoughts and everything down below. But uh, Roman!